if you like what I build and you got video suggestions and you want to speak to me daily or you want to ask me questions about investing instead of asking me in the comment sections, feel free to join the Discord. The link will be in the description below. And in today's episode, we're going to cover the new summoners and what I think of them and more importantly, what the statistics think about them. So one of the subscribers, really cool guy, he basically has been pulling data off the Splinterlands API. And what he's done is through a total of a couple thousand games, you can see that there's been a hundred thousand games with so obviously there's going to be some bots there's also going to be some new players that are only using ghost cards or i think they call it they've got a different word for it but basically minus quinks because he's a legendary or she's a legendary all of these are free so everyone's been slowly adapting to them and spamming them and using them and what we can see i'm first going to look before we look at price let's just look at win rate so the dragon one it has the highest win rate in all yeah just to confirm so the overall winner is the dragon so obviously the price reflects that and it's a legendary he or she destroys like absolutely is just he's crushing it he's got the highest win rate out of all of them across the different divisions um and then the next highest in bronze, I'm just going to use bronze as the main example, but I think I should be using silver. But then the next leader is obsidian, which is the plus one magic. So we all know it, magic's broken. So magic's carrying it after quinks. After magic, we straight away go to the brood, which is anti-magic. <laughs> Quite funny. Uh, after that, we then hit Kayla, which is speed plus armor so i'm gonna say melee focus but it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't play magic if you play her in water and then after that is a tarsa of tersa tessa tarsa uh which is basically the bad version of what's her name sorry uh malric i i i think but for one more for one more mana you get one hp it's basically combining the two it basically combines the two old beta summoners together so it's really strong in that regard but at the same time we know that fi doesn't really want to be tanky it's more just a luxury that you spend buying it where because we know that fi basically likes to play heavy melee if not archer explosion and then just super quick or with pierce and you just hit them in and out and you kill them that way you don't fight the sustain battle because you'll lose where something like old earth is more sustainable and more focused on having big beefy things that out sustain you but yeah so basically just to put it in order the number one in terms of win rate in bronze is the dragon followed by earth followed by death followed by water followed by fire and then finally general sloan is last of the leaderboard so just the quick my quick thoughts on why he would be last in bronze so the main one is actually he's not actually last in he's last in all of them so the main reason that he's low i would say that the main reason he's low in just bronze is because you don't have much mana so if you're playing less than 20 mana games you don't want to stack too many archers because once your frontline tank dies it dies which is why it's a very magic heavy game and you can see that that's done by obsidian being number one and then the brood anti-magic being number two but i still wouldn't expect him to have this worth uh this bad of a win rate uh we can see that as it moves into silver the brood drops off because magic drops off a little bit you can see that obsidian has dropped off a little bit as well so if you're in bronze you can literally spam obsidian if you can see that your enemy has been spamming obsidian you can spam your brood and counter the magic but what you can see is once you get into silver still quinks is great if you can afford it or if you unbox it keep it play it it's great i'm going to say it because i don't know if it's a he or she but you can see that the win rates are starting to drop and then if you look in gold the win rates absolutely tank like nothing's got above a 50 percent win rate and it could just be that there are not enough leveled summoners yet 
or it could just be that people are still getting used to it and still practicing with the new cards or it could just be that <laughs> the old cards are better than the new cards I'm gonna let you guys interpret that it's only been a few days so I'm it's only been like three days so I'm completely chilled I'm when I get more data and more statistics I'll pull it in but there's several thousand games played not enough with quinks but you can still see that they have a decent win rate but more importantly does the price reflect okay that's good so these drop off the brood drops off these pick up he still picks up a little bit and then he just absolutely goes to shit in in gold but it's quite interesting to see and when we look at prices in terms of value it does not reflect that so yes it's a legendary so it doesn't really count but quicks number one very expensive and then in terms of your legendaries it should be obsidian as number one followed by the brood followed by tarsa and then these two would be last so it's kind of like it kind of reflects that with general sloan being the cheapest obsidian being the most expensive it's quite interesting to see that she's valued as much as she is um one of my yeah in the discord one of my subs said what is my price prediction for these guys in general release i honestly think they can go as cheap as one dollar if not cheaper than a dollar but we'll see i'm just going to put that on record right now so you guys can quote me if i'm right or wrong in a few months um okay and then what they did is they even included which whoops yeah yeah they even gave us a nice statistics of what are the best pairings for what the winning teams use to climb and yeah i think let's start with obsidian because she's broken so the number one is the goblin psychic which is the if you don't know what that is it is the new earth card that is this bad boy got the team heal got good damage so just overall good card where is she let's do you like that and then we'll delete you so goblin psychic is up there the regal which is also just the new card it's the high speed flying pegasus type creature uh the slip spawn which is also this one so basically they're spamming this with the taunt this to heal the taunt this with the dodge it's, it's what you expect this could either just be tons of bot accounts that are playing it or just new players that are just using their free cards to play it um yeah some cards that i would highly recommend you incorporate would be some of the beautiful road cards so you can get some center mages you can get your spirit shamans a mushroom seer is probably the one of the best pickups right now because if you play it in your earth meta and it's got silence and you silence another earth player you've got the huge advantage of destroying their summoner so this is not a bad pickup at all i highly recommend it uh, the Wood Nymph is still one of my favorite cards, and then the Djinn with the Camouflage is great because he'll be safe to just hurt as many people as you want. Um, but yeah, so these are just the free ones, and then Khmer Princess also free. They put a Unicorn Mustang in the front, and then Evanary Smells uh, Spellsmith. Ah! Spellsmith in the back, which is, I think, the neutral one that's free. That's what it should be. Oop, oop, oop. Uh, it should be. There you go. Yeah. So it's what you expect. It's all the. It's all just the free cards that either the bots or just the new players in bronze are playing with. But we can also get the stats for gold and silver. So no stress. Okay. Next is the brood. So same thing. It's the when. Windoku, Windoku. It's the, my favorite tank at the moment. It's a Curse Windoku. Followed up with a uh, silent. It would just be. I can already tell you, it's just going to be all of the. Yeah. So it's followed up with him. Followed up with a Life Zapper, which is this guy. So people are just spamming these new cards. Followed up by Death Elemental. 
Undead Badger, Soul Strangler, it's all just the new cards. It's nothing too amazing right now. You can imagine. So they put in this as the tank, obviously minus the magic, minus the health. They've got a really good sneak card that pairs with it. You could even, If you've got the mana, you can put a shadow, uh, shadow Snitch before you play him. And then they put in the Soul Strangler because three, but he's got two damage, which is huge. And then alongside a Life Zapper and other cards. Um, yep, so these are just all the free cards and all the ghost cards. I imagine she'll be the same. So let's switch to our water. Uh, the first one is a Deep Lurker. Okay, yep, I love this card. Great, like, it's so much fun. Uh, and then when you can get some levels on it, eventually, this is a dream, but just having four, four damage, four speed, and it's like a big beefy opportunity card. It's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it, to be honest. So let's go back to the market. Let's go here, back to water, back to monsters. Okay, so it's your deep lurker is your number one card with this. You get your speed, you get your armor, followed by your shark which is a bad version of the sea monster. So if you get sea monster, rather play sea monster. But you've got this bad boy, followed up probably by flying squid, and then whatever else is free, basically. Flying squid, the guardian. Yep. Guardian's great, actually, because it's got 5 HP. Uh, Serpent of Eid. I don't like Serpent of Eid, so I can understand why it's so far back. Uh, Ice Pixie, Feasting Seaweed. Yeah, so these are just all of the free cards. But basically, the current meta for water is you're playing your Demon Shark or your big tank in the front. You're playing it with a Flying Squid in position 2. You can get your Deep Lurkers. I'm going to switch on Untamed and do that. So you switch on your Deep Lurkers. You've got a very cheap 3 mana, 1 HP, 5 in your back line to stop you against stealth. So you can throw in your Feasting Seaweed now, if not your Pixies. So super cool. It's what you want. It's what we wanted to see, and more importantly, it's what we expected to happen. So water is now shifting away from magic, and it's now become more focused on melee damage and focused on its opportunities and stuff like that, which is what we expected, and it's what's the most. Yeah, it's what the winning teams are doing at the moment, and it's quite interesting that the the Torhilo is so far down. But if you look at the play rate, it's this is obviously going to be skewed because it's super skewed because that's where all of the uh, it's all the free cards basically. So the free cards will always be in the front. I'm gonna f I'll speak to the wonderful sub that made all these graphs. Maybe we can find a way to dig into the de uh, the data a little bit more accurately because we're just gonna get all of the different freebies. But this is a little bit more interesting because now you get to see what the dragons played. But I'll save the dragon for last. Let's see that. The dragons can be interesting. So we'll do that to last. Oops. Did we open it twice? Yeah, we did. Okay, cool. So we do. Done water. We've done earth. We've done death. Okay, so then let's do fire next. Okay, so fire. Your number one tank is still living lava. None of the new tanks have beaten it. Living lava, Serpent Spy are still king. Then you can see a huge. You can see how good this drop is, and then it's followed up by the striker. So we already said that, and we already ag acknowledged how good this card is going to be. So if you're playing fire, or you're playing against the person that's playing fire, good chances they've just dropped the living lava in the front, and then a spy or a striker in the back, depending on the mana. Then what they've done is they've done a radiant scorcher. What are you, a radiant scorcher? Okay, Ugh. okay, yeah. There's better cards than this, so I wouldn't recommend it. But they're putting the Scorcher in as a free opportunity hitter or free snipe or whatever. Followed by a Radiant Brute. Okay, yeah, Radiant Brute's really cool. This is good because it's got the two damage. So it's much better than the previous Reach fire cards. Uh, Antoid, no, this is shit. Fire Elemental's good. The Jin Apprentice. Such an apprentice. Yep, he's good. Okay. Spark pixels vibe. Okay, so that's what you expect. Uh, the only thing I would say is I don't like this 
Android Platoon, maybe it's good in 4v4, like in Little Minions, but apart from that I wouldn't use it. And then for the Radiant Scorcher, Radiated Scorcher, there's many better one like one mana cards. I know that you'll just pick it to get sniped and to use it as a freebie, but there are better ones. So try and get your ooze and other cards out. But yeah. So she's just making this game purely melee. So you obviously stack your living lava, your serving spy, and your striker. So that makes sense. And then finally, the big bad archer boy. I'm hoping that we see a lot of what is his name? Yeah, the Albalist. But let's see. Yep, there you go. Number one, it's the Albalist. So not exp so you give plus one damage. This guy suddenly gets plus two damage, and you suddenly get it. You've got a six damage two HP card. Super broken shield bearer, best tank still. If you look here, like. This Chaos Knight is pretty shit when you compare it to what is created and what is given from a Shield Bearer. You get, let's just say, 13. Here you get 7. So for 2 mana more, you get a much beefier tank, and more importantly, a tank with Taunt. Well, she's got Shield, so Shield's really good, but the Taunt means that you can keep him alive a bit longer. Followed up with your Crystal Smith. Okay, so that's good. So, finally, it's a it's one reward card that's not, this isn't a free card anymore, it's a card that is just super strong, it's only 90 cents, so you should pick some up if you can, but super good card that's been picked up, and yeah, nothing to complain, it's what you expect, so they put in some archers, they put this, the herbalist is the two mana archer card, Portal Spinner, I'm not too sure what a Portal Spinner is, I'm assuming it's the new one, yeah, okay, so they just stack arches behind it, and there's a reason that's failing, if you guys can, what you should do is, in the Untamed, you should try and pick up a Hero of the Beyond, he might be just what you need to be your position too, or you pick up some of magic, you just pick up some good magic cards, like there's some, there's tons of good ones in life, that could help you fix it, but it's what you expect. I'm quite happy to see that Crystal Smith is number three. It's the first time we've actually seen like a break. It would have been nice to see Wave Smith for water, but clearly not. And now we get to see Dragon and see how Dragon's been used in this meta. So first thing is the Jin Chawala. So it's the card I've been buying a lot of. He's dropped in price so much, but $2 to pick up this card. 14 damage plus thorns plus 2 damage he is in my opinion a better version of the shield bearer and you can see by that difference in winning teams and losing teams it's huge so best card to use plus you get in minus their speed and archer damage followed up by chaos dragon so if you can afford it what people are doing is this bad boy is destroying the meta right now doing a lot of damage with the scattershot magic. Naga Assassin, okay, another reward card that's come out, which is really cool. Minusing their speed and having five speed at level one is great. And then if you can get it into high levels, you can get the backfire and then backfire basically breaks this card. Uh, Furious Chicken, um, I'm glad to see the chickens there, even though it's got a negative win rate. And a Crystal Smith. Okay, that's awesome. That's that you can see the difference between winning and losing teams. Uh, the other thing is there aren't too many Quinks games played, so we still gotta wait for more data to come in. But you can see here that you should not be playing is this ooze? And this is Desert Dragon. But just from the statistics, it looks like the this should be the Desert Dragon. So playing a Desert Dragon with a Quinx is not the meta. It's better to play your chihuahua and yeah that's kind of it okay we're we're hitting 20 minutes which is quite late and i don't want to make this video too long so i'm going to call it quits there uh if you want me or any more statistics or any any of my thoughts on the meta let me know in the comments down below or join the discord and pop it into the video suggestions i do listen to it and like I said, I wasn't going to build this video, but because one of the subscribers said, hey, I've got all this awesome data, do you want it? I said, hell yeah, I want it. I would love to share it with you guys. 
So if you enjoyed it, please let them know in the comments down below to say thanks. We appreciate what you've done. So please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you want me to do next. And if you're a new player, please use the promo code and I will happily send you the 0.5 US dollars back to you. It just lets me know that people are watching and using the promo and I'm helping new players join the community. Also, if you find me on the Discord, just pop me a message. I'll happily delegate any of the new players some power.